Hey guys, in my last two videos, I showed you my new mill pan and stand for the G0704. And the whole reason why I built those was so I could eventually have flood coolant. So we're gonna cover that in this video and this will be the final video in this uh, three-part series. A couple of people told me that a kitchen sink drain was not a great idea because they plug up pretty easily and it's true i'm here to tell you i've already experienced this but i was looking for a fast cheap way to get my flood coolant up and running and this was the solution eventually i may upgrade it and if i do i'll show you in a video but this is about a ten dollar drain that came from i think lowe's and the thing i don't like about it is the flange is kind of thick and it's tapered so even without that rubber o-ring or rubber gasket it sits a little bit higher off the pan than what i like right after i bought this i was in a like a mom and pop hardware store and i noticed uh, a much nicer uh, sink drain and i'm going to show you that here in just a second and it has a very very thin flange and it sits perfectly flat and then all i did was use some of that black permatech silicone to seal it down to the pan and it worked perfectly. Uh, check the description for a link where you can buy this on Amazon. I think it was like 10 bucks. Also, if you take a look at the pan, the, the hole I cut with a, I think it was a three and a half inch hole saw through the pan itself, but through that thick stand top, I actually had to take that galvanized flange that you see in the top left corner and I laid underneath the stand and I traced a circle and then I used a quarter inch drill bit and I drilled a million holes around the perimeter of the circle that I drew and then using chisels and a ball peen hammer I knocked all that wood out and it took forever I had to make sure not to drill through the stand and pan while I was drilling from the bottom it was a total nightmare but it worked so onto the sump this is a five gallon bucket I went with three gallons of water there's a two and a half quart bucket on the top using these stainless steel scrubby balls as filters. I had originally planned on using some green scratch, scotch bright pads. The problem is I found out that those degrade after a while and then you end up with little teeny bits of green scratch bright pad going through your mill and your ways and your stuff and it's abrasive. So uh, don't, don't do that. Use these uh, stainless steel scrubbers they're super cheap too i think i bought three packs for like six bucks or something and ended up with nine or twelve of the stainless steel balls i, I don't know they're really cheap so this is a 330 gallon per hour pump that was in a koi pond when i bought this house so i didn't have to buy a pump but it's not enough pump in my opinion eventually i'd like to get more like a thousand gallons per hour uh, you can see in the bottom of that two and a half quart bucket that i drilled a bunch of holes in it to let the coolant out and the, the coolant that I'm using is the Cool Mist 77, and so far I'm super happy with it. It says to mix four ounces per gallon, but I actually mixed eight ounces per gallon because I wanted to be sure that there wasn't going to be any rust. And I've left, I intentionally put some mild steel bars, uh, you know, dipped them in this stuff in, in my... Uh, in my solution, I should say, after it's mixed with the water and left them overnight to dry out, zero rust. This stuff's fantastic. You probably don't need to double it up, but I did anyway. So you should have 12 ounces for three gallons. I went with 24 ounces, uh, really not a big deal. And then you can see that cheap nylon hose is what I'm gonna be using it to send up to the manifold. And then I also wired in a, you can buy an extension cord that only has a plug on one end uh, I call it a whip. I don't know what it's really called. And I just wired that up to a, a light switch basically so I could turn the, the pump on and off from underneath the mill. And eventually, again, probably something fancier down the road, but I just wanted to get up and running. So the nylon hose comes up to a nylon barb that threads into some half-inch PVC fittings. And I actually got this idea for the manifold from, I think it was Christopher Anglin is how you say his name, his YouTube channel. And then I had to use some brass quarter inch to half inch reducers because I couldn't find PVC ones locally. And then uh, these quarter inch lock lines with lock line valves. I used, uh, yeah, just zip ties to zip tie this thing up to the mill head. Eventually I might make some fancy brackets. I did have to drill a couple of holes in the back of the head so I could run uh, zip ties through there. And then you saw me holding uh, a third, there's a plug on the front of that manifold where I could add a third uh, lock line in the future if I wanted or something else, I guess. The shower curtain and shower curtain rings came from the dollar store. Six bucks for three shower curtains and three packages of rings. And then just more half inch PVC, really ghetto and it sucks. And then because it's white, when I close the front, I can't see through it. So it's a total nightmare, but 
again, super cheap, super fast. I had it all built in no time, and that's what I was looking for. Eventually, I'll do some upgrades, and of course, I'll document it. Okay, so this part, I'm drilling holes in my uh, in my bearing mounts from the CNC conversion, and this is going to be to hold a couple of aluminum shields that I made to cover my stepper motors. Now, if you look, underneath the motor is some white, uh, it's actually, I think it's PVC tubing is what it's advertised as, but it's very, very flexible. In fact, I'll roll some footage in right here showing you how flexible it is. And all I did was run my stepper wires through all of that and then just a couple of zip ties hold it up close to the bottom of the um, stepper so it's not flopping around, and this worked great. I made my shields uh, a little bit long so that the coolant can't splash back up underneath the uh, stepper motors, and I'll show you those shields here in just a second. I think I used 032 uh, thick aluminum, and it's like a 5000 series or maybe even a 3000 series aluminum, so it's soft enough that it can be bent with a brake. I made a homemade brake out of plywood and a 2x4, and I'll actually do a video on that. It, it was so cheap and ghetto, and I, I, I used hinges from a door. I actually just took hinges off of a, off of a d bedroom door in my house. Uh, so I could make it this break. It, it's so bad. You, you guys are going to love it. And uh, yeah, that's how I bent up my aluminum shields. Here again, you can see the way that the the wires are routed inside this white tubing. And also, uh, this white tubing, it's a nightmare pulling your wires through there. So if you go to Lowe's in the, like I think, coax and phone line section, you can get that lubricant that's specifically made for pulling wires through uh, conduit and stuff and I didn't use that but it would make your life a lot easier so here's my aluminum shield got my holes drilled and tapped some 1032 uh, cap screws hold it down and that's it you'll notice I did hammer a drip edge into the back of the shield and I just did that by putting a, a block of wood underneath the edge of the shield and then using a ball peen hammer just rounded them over in fact I don't even think it was a ball peen hammer I think it was a framing hammer but that will just allow the coolant to drip right off the edge without rolling up underneath the uh, the shields. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So here's the two lock lines. You can see at 330 gallons per hour is not an insane amount of uh, coolant. I would like to have more pressure, uh, more volume. So it's just, you know, I can blow chips out of deep holes, that kind of thing. And then you could also see the front of the manifold where that third lock line could be installed if I wanted. My... Uh, my whole pan, my stand is tipped forward so that the coolant will run to the front. But because of the way I built my stand, that drain can't be at the front edge of the pan because it gets in the way of a cross member on the stand. So it does puddle up a little bit and that's unfortunate, but whatever. Uh, there you can see the drip edge working great. And also you can see that I lifted that bucket up onto some two by sixes just to get a little bit more room. All right, well, that's everything with this video. I hope you liked it. In fact, if you did, go ahead and click the like button at the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.